lifetime ambition of owning his own cinema. Peter Moore from Kinwell Bay has managed to buy five screens in as many years. And as a child, I went to a cinema in St. Helens on Merseyside, where we used to live, and was immediately captivated by the glamour, um, the glitz, and everything. And I decided there and then that I would like to own a cinema. Hi everybody, Matt and Danielle back with you. Today we're on Pensan Beach in North Wales. Today it is a family friendly location. On the way in we drove past fun fairs and caravan parks. In the background on the hillside there you might be able to make out a castle. That was the I'm a Celebrity Castle from Lockdown. The story we're going to tell you though takes place roughly 30 years ago and in 1995 Pensan Beach was a very different place. This whole area was a notorious gay cruising area and of course in 1995 things were very different. It was still a taboo subject Lots of people were not out, but to get what they needed, they would come here onto the beach in the dark and engage in whatever activity they wanted to. A bit further on, you might just be able to make out a toilet block. That was a particularly notorious place for meetings. So if not on the beach or in the car park, gay men would go to toilets to meet up. But over a 20 year period, this particular toilet block was also the scene of violent attacks on men over a 20 year period. However, the police turned a blind eye to many of these attacks and most victims even refused to report the attacks due to homophobia and risk of persecution or the fear of coming out. They were all attacked, however, by a man in black. If these walls could talk. So this is very strange. I don't usually film in toilets. I have to pay to come into this one. Uh, so it's nobody else hanging out. But yeah, these are the toilets where people would meet here in secret um, and things would happen which I don't need to explain to you what those things are um, but a lot of the attacks took place here inside the toilets and a lot of those attacks were reportedly done by the man in black. December 1995 the family of Anthony Davis reports him missing and on December 17th, early in the morning, the police find his car at the car park just behind us here. Standing on the brake wall, the policeman looked down and could see at the water's edge a body. The head of the body was actually in the water and the tide was coming in. So the policeman asked for permission to bring the body further up the beach and he did. As he was pulling the body further up the beach it became obvious the person in the water had been stabbed multiple times and the person they found was Anthony Davis. North Wales was a relatively crime free area specifically when it came to murder. Anthony Davis was 40 years old and had two children. He was a cremation worker at Colwyn Bay. 
but he was also the third murder victim in as many months on the North Wales coast. In September 1995, at Kergeliog in Anglesey, 56-year-old Henry Roberts had been found dead on his driveway, He'd been killed in a frenzied stabbing attack. In November 1995, the police had found the body of 49-year-old Keith Randalls on a construction site next to the roadside in Langefni. He'd also been stabbed multiple times. Both of these murders had taken place on Anglesey, roughly 10 miles apart. So the police started to put together, finally, that these killings may be connected. Especially as now one victim was definitely gay. One had died here in a notorious gay location. So what they did was they, they actually reached out to the gay community for help. They set up a hotline for people to anonymously ring. And the messages they kept receiving were people over 20 years who had run into a man in black on the beach here at Pensar. Just three miles away is Kimmel Bay and in the biggest house in the town lived Peter Moore, a friendly local cinema owner, businessman and hardware store owner that he and his parents had run since the 1950s. So behind me is Darlington House in Kimmel Bay. Uh, this is where Peter Moore and his parents moved to in the 1950s. And from here, they ran it as a hardware store. And it was also possibly classed as the biggest house in Kimmel Bay. Peter Moore was born in September 1946 at St Helens in Merseyside. Growing up as a teenager in Darlington House in the 50s and 60s proved quite difficult for Peter as there were tensions in the house between father and son. Peter was gay and also had an effeminate manner. Homosexuality was still illegal at the time. So with the tensions with his father, Peter grew exceptionally closer to his mother. The whole family ran the hardware store. Peter's father died in the 1980s, but they continued the business. Peter then started to follow his greatest passion by restoring and running old cinemas across North Wales. These included the former Empire Cinema in Blynau Festiniog, the Wedgwood Cinema in Denby, the Focus Cinema in Bagilt, and the Empire Cinema on Hollyhead. This passion for the cinema saw Peter become a local celebrity and became known as the saviour of cinema. Somewhat different weather this morning and we're in Hollyhead and as you have mentioned Peter Moore ran cinemas across the north of England known as the saviour of cinema. Um, one of those cinemas still exists and is open it's the only one that's open uh, and it's this one so this is the empire cinema on hollyhead built in 1920 and closed originally in 1992 it was reopened by moore around 1994 specifically screening family films starting with the lion king 
Parents were known to come and leave their children at the cinema on a Saturday morning with Uncle Peter. When it closed again in 1996, it didn't reopen until 2012. So now we're in Denby, and behind us is the remains of another of Peter Moore's cinemas. This was known as the Scala Cinema, opened in 1928 then rechanged to the Wedgwood Cinema. Closed in 1980 on Halloween night with a double screening of Rabid and Dead of Night. Moore reopened it in 95, but obviously by 96 it was closed again. It never reopened. There's not much of it left. But let's see if we can get a sneak at anything. This is the back of the cinema. Yeah, just a, an empty shell full of weeds now. Whoa, I'm very slippy. <laughs> In the 1980s, Peter Moore became involved in the S&M bondage scene. Specifically, he played the part of the sadist, the one who gives out the pain. He also had a fascination with the Nazi regime. So he would often be seen dressed fully in black leather, but also including the peaked cap and the boots. He would wear this outfit when he was at work as a projectionist, because obviously wearing black makes sense. But he would also wear it when he went out cruising and visiting nightclubs. Peter Moore was the man in black. Peter Moore's mother passed away in 1995. This led to Moore becoming increasingly unhinged over time. The sadist who got his sexual pleasure out of inflicting pain turned the violence up and escalated it to extreme and tragic levels. As Moore drove across North Wales from cinema to cinema, he started to find his victims. So this location is called Kegeliog, something like that. It's not very easy to see now because it's dark, but the house behind me here, um, this is where Peter Moore claimed his first victim. This is the house of Henry Roberts. And Henry um, was in the house at night. Peter had pulled up the driveway here and created a noise. Henry had come out of the house to see what was going on. That is when Peter attacked him. Henry was a 56 year old railway worker who lived alone with no family. His body was found on the driveway just outside his house. He'd been killed in a frenzied stabbing attack. There were 13 stab wounds to his back, 14 to his front and two in his buttocks. Two months later, as Moore was once again driving across Anglesey, he stopped at a construction site by the roadside in Langefni and spotted a caravan with a light on. And that caravan was Keith Randall's. Keith opened the door to Peter and Peter stabbed him multiple times. Keith's body was found the next day as the workers arrived on site. And with Anthony Davis's body in December 95, this looked like the work of a serial killer to the police, who had decided the murders are probably linked and had asked the gay community for help. Anonymous hotline 
had been set up. And one call had come from a man who had met a man dressed in black leather on Pensarn Beach. The man had gone with the man in black back to his house. Whilst there, he'd been beaten and tortured and claimed he was lucky to escape with his life. The location of that house was in Kimmel Bay. The house was Darlington House. The one lived in by Peter Moore. The man known to dress in black leather and also to have a white van. With a white van having been spotted at Pensound Beach and a few days earlier in the driveway of Henry Roberts, the police decided to pounce. December the 22nd, 1995, the police spot Moore leaving in his white van and follow. They pull him over and they arrest him. In the van is a knife. Moore showed no emotion as he was arrested and then charged with the murders. So when the police came to search the house after his arrest, what they found was quite intriguing because in the house, firstly, there was his mother's room left exactly as it had been from the day she died. There was also amongst chintzy curtains and teddy bears, S&M gear and whips and bondage gear. On the walls there was blood from where people had been whipped before. It's quite an intriguing scene and very much a difference between one side of that character and the other. But during the search they also found a Nazi flag that belonged to Henry Roberts. A VHS recorder that had been stolen from Keith's caravan. And a jacket that belonged to Anthony Davis. On Christmas Eve 1995, Peter Moore confessed to the killings. But on Christmas Day, he stunned the interview team by saying there was a fourth victim. From his cinema in Begilt, Moore would often go into Liverpool and visit the gay bars and nightclubs there. One such club was called Paco's. And he'd visited this bar in October 1995. There, he'd met Edward Carthy, 28 years old, and in a bad place in his life, due to his partner having recently committed suicide. Carthy lived in Tranmere. The worst for wear, Moore had offered Carthy a lift home. Carthy got into Moore's white van and they set off. But unfortunately, Edward fell asleep. Moore drove to the Clokainog Forest back in Wales. From there, once again, another frenzied attack, and Carthy's body was hidden under some trees, and only discovered when Moore told them where he had hidden it. Moore also admitted to 20 years of attacks on gay males across the community. Asked why he had committed these acts, he claimed, I did it for fun. On January 3rd, 1996, Moore contacts the police from his cell. He tells them that everything he's already said to them was a story that he had made up. He hadn't committed the murders. He was innocent. And the killings had been committed by a man called Jason. The very same Jason who was the murderer in the Friday the 13th film series. 
films that Moore had shown regularly at his cinemas. In November 1996, Moore went on trial for the murders and even used the Jason character in his defence, said that he revelled in the limelight and enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame. But if there was anything diabolical about a defendant I have seen, and I have seen many defendants over the decades, he was diabolical. Moore was found guilty on all counts and jailed for life and will never be released. His capture brought to end a 20 year reign of terror and a murderous streak that would have continued, but one which was thankfully brief. He is known as the worst serial killer in Welsh history. Okay, so that is the story of Peter Moore. Now we went from being the saviour of the cinema to Wales's most notorious serial killer. To the victims, rest in peace. To the families and friends of the victims, I hope you've found peace in the 30 years since the activities took place. Sadly, it is a story that will not go away due to the nature of it it will keep appearing every now and again but yeah hopefully time has healed things so there we are we shall leave you from our adventure in wales and see you again soon for the next video from daniel and me take care bye for now